Hello and welcome to Infinity. Let's do an edit of this picture here. And what can we see first of all? The first thing I usually look at are things like are things level and uh, straighten things up a bit. And here this is tilting upwards a bit there. I think that is tilting down a bit. If you want to check these things, hit control and single quote on the layer. There we go, and you'll get a grid. You can change the grid through the grid manager under the view menu. And what I can see, this is definitely going uphill there, and that's kind of, I think that's tilting down a bit. So what we can do is go to the perspective tool, and I just simply drag this up down a bit until I get that on a level. And I'll look at the ones up there and drag this one up until they're on a level. Watch the lines across the wall as well. That's OK. And apply that. So hit control single quote again to get rid of that. Now then, let's do a crop next. Because this is where our picture is going to be. And that will affect all other decisions. Don't need the light up there. That's a distraction away from the subject. Don't need this empty space over here. So I'll pull that in. There's just too much of this down here. So I'm going to pull that up. And a little on that side. Don't particularly necessary. And I don't worry too much about thirds, by the way. There's a lot said about that, which is a bit over enthusiastic. So I'll apply that. There we go. Now then, to perk it up, an easy way to do this is go to tone mapping. And But if you've done a crop, it's, you need to throw away the bits that you've cut off. So you do layer, rasterize and trim. Nothing seems to happen, but the bit around the edges, which were invisible, are now completely gone. So that when we go to the tone mapping, all you do is get this bit sent over here. And this starts off with a natural setting and tone compression is fully up. And that's the one I, I'm going to use. In fact, yeah, it's OK up, up. It's nice and light. I don't use local contrast much because it, it will tend to go into a grungy sort of HDR-ish thing. And the rest of the controls you've got elsewhere. So I'll just apply that. But that's lightened up the picture quite significantly already. But now I need to focus the light in on this. So I'll construct myself a variable vignette. So I'll do that by first of all going to layer, new fill layer, and I'll make that one black. Then I want to put a, an ellipse there. I'm just going to put it in the middle for the moment, and I'll make that one white, and there's no stroke on it. And I'm just going to shift click the fill to so I selected those two, hit Control G for group to group them together and change the blend mode there from pass through down to multiply. So now I can see something of this, but this is all black. So I just need to bring the opacity of the whole thing down so I can see something of this. And I can move my vignette area to wherever I want to. But first of all, I'm going to blur the edges of this. This is just a searchlight at the moment. I go to the ellipse, hit the live filters and go up to the Gaussian blur and put something pretty big on this. If I turn the radius up, that's nowhere near enough, but I can type in here as well. So let's put 400 in that. And I, it should be so blurred you can hardly see the edge of it. That's not too bad. I can always go back and change this. Then I go back, click on the ellipse again, and now I'm going to sort of position it where I want it to be. So I'm going to put it around this person here and basically go up to the tree edge here. So the tree's sort of like an enveloping um, thing in here, which is holding this in. So there we go. I think I'm actually going to put a little bit more detail into the, the edges of things here. So I'm going to go back to the background hit Control J to duplicate it. And then I'm going to do a kind of odd thing, which is I'm going to go to the filters detect and detect edges, which does this. That looks pretty alarming. 
But what you can do with this, again, go to blend modes, go down to soft light, and that's affected that fairly well. And again, just bring this down. If I go all the way down and drag upwards until it looks like it's just got a little bit more interesting detail into it. I prefer that to the tonal contrast often. And this is say looking a lot nicer now. Uh, <coughs> let's go to that ellipse again. Is that looking okay? Yes, that's okay. Don't want to mess around with that. And uh, so I want to put an extra light on this person as well. So I'm going to put in a, an ellipse on here, doing this another way. And uh, that's gone above the group. That's good. And and again, I'm going to do a blur on this ellipse. So Ally Filters and Gaussian Blur. Turn that up. Maybe type in some more, maybe 300. There you go, it's like, it's like a light shiny on it. And again now with this, just go down to something like soft light. And that puts this as a, like a, a bit more light on the subject, which gives it more attention. Let's click away from the move tool so you can see that there. So if I turn that down, see that's darkened. And I gradually turn that up until it's given me light. It doesn't look like it's over lightened and you can hardly see that it's there. So it looks natural, but you take it away and it's just that little bit darker. So overall, here we go. That's that's just tweak this a bit. I think there's too much light in this area here, which may be from this ellipse here. So I'm going to bring this in a bit so it's more aligned with the the person reading here. Even just kind of go outside a bit there. And there, that's better. The lighter is in the right area now. It was kind of distracting a bit over there. And this is what you're often doing in photographs, is playing around with where the light goes. I'm going to leave that there. And then so we can see we started off like this. And we ended up like this. What do you think is just a little bit better? There we are. And thank you very much for watching.